The door to the nail salon opened with a soft jingle, heralding the entrance of Emily, a young woman in unassuming attire, her demeanor humble yet confident. She stepped into the salon, her eyes taking in the chic decor and the rows of vibrant nail polish lining the walls. Behind the reception desk, a woman with perfectly styled hair and immaculate makeup glanced up. Her eyes, sharp and assessing, briefly swept over Emily, narrowing ever so slightly. It was a look that carried a subtle, unspoken judgment, as if Emily's modest dress was somehow out of place in the salon's fashionable ambiance. Emily, unperturbed by the administrator's less-than-welcoming gaze, made her way to the desk. The administrator, Rachel, sighed with apparent inconvenience and set aside her smartphone, its screen still aglow from her recently interrupted social media browsing. Do you have an appointment? She asked, her voice dripping with a tone that was more robotic than hospitable. Her fingers danced over the register, not really expecting to find Emily's name. The salon was relatively quiet, the hum of conversation from the few customers mingling with the soft background music. It was clear from the sparsely filled appointment book that the day was not particularly busy. Rachel seemed to size up Emily, assuming, perhaps because of her simple clothing, that Emily couldn't have afforded the services anyways. Do you work exclusively by appointment? Emily inquired politely, her gaze drifting to an unoccupied nail station, its chair invitingly empty. Rachel, now leaning back in her chair with an air of superiority, responded with a hint of condescension. Today, we're a bit understaffed. Only two technicians are in, and as you can see, she gestured languidly towards the occupied stations. They're quite busy. We might squeeze you in if you don't mind waiting, but I can't make any promises. Emily's eyes followed Rachel's gesture, noting that one of the technicians was just finishing up with a client. The scene suggested that her wait might not be as long as implied. Sensing an opportunity, she decided to stay. I'll wait, thank you, Emily replied her tone firm yet polite, choosing to overlook Rachel's thinly veiled arrogance. As Emily took a seat in the waiting area, Rachel watched her with a faintly amused expression, as if the idea of someone like Emily waiting for a last-minute slot was somehow amusing or out of the ordinary. Rachel, after casting a dismissive glance at Emily, swiftly turned her attention back to her phone. Her disinterest was palpable, leaving Emily to find her way to a plush sofa on her own. As she settled into the soft cushions, Emily caught another fleeting look of displeasure from Rachel, a look that seemed to say she didn't quite belong. Emily offered a small, resilient smile in response, determined not to let the cold reception dampen her spirits. She was here for a bit of pampering, and she wasn't about to let Rachel's attitude rob her of that pleasure. As the nail technician finished up her work, the salon's atmosphere shifted almost palpably. Rachel, previously so aloof and disengaged, suddenly became the epitome of charm and warmth. She approached the elegantly dressed client, her voice honeyed and her smile bright. Miss Harrington, your nails look absolutely stunning as always, Rachel exclaimed, her eyes sparkling with the practiced adoration. The color choice is just perfect for you. The client, Miss Harrington, a picture of poise and grace, glanced at her freshly manicured nails and beamed. Thank you, dear. I always trust your team to make the best suggestions. You never disappoint. Oh, it's our pleasure entirely, Rachel replied, her tone effusive. We strive to provide the best service to our esteemed clients. It's always a delight to see you here. Miss Harrington, retrieving her purse, pulled out a few bills, placing them on the counter with a gentle smile. Well, the service today was exceptional. Keep up the good work. Rachel's eyes lit up at the sight of the generous tip. Thank you so much, Ms. Harrington. We truly appreciate your kindness and patronage. I hope we'll be seeing you again soon. Absolutely, Ms. Harrington affirmed, her voice laced with the confidence of someone accustomed to such pleasantries. I wouldn't trust anyone else with my nails. See you in a couple of weeks. With a final exchange of pleasantries, Ms. Harrington gracefully exited the salon, leaving Rachel momentarily basking in the glow of the successful interaction. As the door closed behind Ms. Harrington, Rachel's smile faded, her attention quickly diverting back to her phone. The mask of hospitality dropped as swiftly as it had been donned. Another 10 minutes ticked by as the second technician finished up. Typically, the conclusion of a service would be the cue for Rachel to attend to the next client, to offer a warm welcome or perhaps assist with a coat. But instead, something unexpected happened. 
The nail technician, after a brief exchange with Rachel, disappeared into the back office following the first technician. The salon, now quiet, seemed to amplify the awkwardness of the situation. Emily glanced around, wondering if perhaps she had misunderstood Rachel's earlier suggestion that she might be accommodated. Rachel, still engrossed in her phone, seemed completely oblivious to Emily's presence. After an excruciatingly slow five minutes ticked by, each second stretching longer than the last, Emily's patience began to fray at the edges. Rising from the plush sofa, she made her way back to the reception desk, her resolve stealing with each step. Rachel, still engrossed in her phone, didn't look up until Emily stood directly in front of her. Excuse me, Emily began, her voice calm but firm. Could you please tell me when someone will be free to assist me? Rachel finally lifted her eyes from her phone, her gaze cold and uninviting. Do you not see we're on a break? She snapped, her tone dripping with disdain. The technicians work meticulously with tiny brushes and tiny nails all day. They need a break to rest their eyes and hands. They'll be back to attend to you once they're done. Her words were edged with a sharpness that made Emily take a small step back. Emily, taken aback by the blunt rudeness, struggled to maintain her composure. I understand that, but I was under the impression there would be a slight wait, not a complete halt of service. Rachel let out an exaggerated sigh, her impatience evident. Well, you understood wrong. It's not like we're running a factory line here. Quality takes time and rest is part of that quality. You'll get your turn when they're ready, not a minute sooner. As Rachel spoke, her eyes appraised Emily, taking in her modest clothing and unadorned appearance. An idea seemed to flicker in her eyes, one that brought a smug, almost cruel smile to her lips. She chose, quite deliberately, not to mention the salon's high-end pricing. The thought of Emily's potential surprise, or better yet, shock, at the cost, seemed to please her. Emily, sensing an unspoken judgment from Rachel's scrutinizing gaze, felt a flush of embarrassment mixed with annoyance. Yet she held her ground, her voice steady. Very well, I'll wait. But I do hope the service will be worth the delay. Rachel merely shrugged, her arrogance palpable. We're the best in town. If you can't appreciate that, it's your loss, not ours. What a first day to start my career, Emily mused to herself. She hadn't come to the salon to get her nails done. Not at all. In fact, she hated doing her nails. And if Rachel was attentive enough to look at her nails, instead of trying to judge her by the way she was dressed, she would have probably guessed that Rachel's nails were perfectly fine and didn't really need any job done. Emily's return from Germany marked not just the culmination of her academic journey, but also a reflective pause in her lifelong passion for the arts. In high school, Emily was more than just interested in art. She was deeply immersed in it. Her days were a vibrant tapestry of sketching, painting, and exploring various art forms. She spent countless hours in the art studio, her hands often stained with paint or dusted with charcoal, her mind alive with creative fervor. Her teachers often remarked on her innate talent and unwavering dedication, predicting a bright future for her in the art world. Emily's dreams were vast and vivid. She envisioned herself as a renowned artist, her works exhibited in prestigious galleries across the globe. She dreamed of revolutionizing the art scene, blending traditional techniques with modern perspectives to create something truly unique. These aspirations were the driving force behind her decision to study at one of the best arts and design schools in Germany, a place she believed would be the crucible for her creative metamorphosis. However, reality unfolded differently. The rigorous academic environment and the competitive nature of the art world were both exhilarating and daunting. While she excelled in her studies, the practicalities of making a living through art became increasingly apparent. The art world was not just about talent and passion. It was also about connections, marketing, and sometimes sheer luck. Emily realized that her path as an artist would be fraught with challenges, but this revelation did not dampen her spirit. Instead, it added a layer of realism to her dreams. She returned home not with a diminished passion, but with a more grounded understanding of what it would take to achieve her dreams in the art world. And the first step was to finally admit to her dad that she was wrong. Emily's father, Gerald, was now a sturdy man in his mid-fifties with a kind but serious face. He was the proud owner of a thriving chain of gyms that dotted the state, a testament to his hard work and dedication. However, his journey to success wasn't a solo endeavor. His wife, Amanda, was the mastermind behind the gym business. Their story began years ago when they were newlyweds. 
Amanda, always proactive about health, had just given birth to Emily. She was determined to regain her fitness and wanted Gerald to join her in her journey. Gerald, on the other hand, had always been skeptical about the benefits of physical activity. He preferred a more laid-back lifestyle and often joked about exercise being overrated. But life has a way of teaching lessons. Over time, Gerald started noticing changes in his body. He developed a paunch that stubbornly refused to go away and began experiencing apnea, which made his nights restless. It was during these struggling nights that Amanda stepped in. One evening, as they sat in their cozy living room, Amanda brought up the topic gently but firmly. Gerald, have you noticed your snoring has gotten worse? She asked, concern lacing her voice. Gerald, who was flipping through a magazine, looked up, a bit embarrassed. Yeah, I guess it has, he admitted. It's not just the snoring, Amanda continued, her hand reaching out to his. I'm worried about your health, love. I think it's time for a change. Gerald and Amanda were a young couple with limited financial means, trying their best to provide for their family. They couldn't afford the luxury of a high-end gym, so they opted for a modest one that fit their budget. Little did they know, this decision would be the turning point in their lives. As they began their fitness journey, Gerald and Amanda noticed numerous shortcomings in the gym they frequented. The equipment was often out of order, the staff seemed disinterested, and the atmosphere lacked motivation. One evening, after a particularly frustrating workout session, they sat down at a nearby cafe, their conversation turning to the gym's flaws. I just wish they'd fix the treadmills more often, Gerald grumbled, stirring his coffee. And the staff could be friendlier, don't you think? Amanda added, her brow furrowed in thought. It's like they don't even care. As they listed one issue after another, a spark of realization dawned on them. Why don't we do something about it? Amanda suddenly said, her eyes bright with an idea. We could offer to manage the gym, make it better. Gerald, surprised, pondered the idea. Do you think the owner would go for that? They decided to approach the gym owner with their proposal. To their surprise, the owner, a man more interested in the building's rental income than the gym's performance, welcomed their offer. He was content as long as the gym made some money and didn't cause any trouble. Gerald and Amanda eagerly took over the day-to-day -day operations, injecting new life into the gym. They repaired equipment, hired enthusiastic staff, and created a welcoming environment. Their efforts paid off, and the gym's popularity soared. However, as they worked, a new dream took root in their hearts. They wanted to create a space that truly reflected their vision of what a gym should be. This desire led them to the bold decision to start their own brand. With determination and a clear vision, they launched their first gym. It was a modest start, but their passion and commitment were anything but. This was the beginning of what would become a successful chain of gyms, a legacy of their hard work and dedication to improving the lives of others through fitness. Fifteen years flew by and their small gym venture had blossomed into a vast empire with over 150 gyms spread across the state. On the surface, everything seemed perfect, a remarkable success story. But beneath this facade of triumph, Gerald harbored a deep sorrow, a wound that never truly healed. A few years earlier, his beloved wife, Amanda, had tragically passed away in a car accident. The loss was devastating, leaving Gerald and their daughter, Emily, grappling with an immense void in their lives. One evening, Gerald sat in his study, surrounded by the trophies and accolades his gyms had earned. He looked at a photo of Amanda on his desk, a reminder of happier times. Emily, now a young woman, quietly entered the room. She noticed her father's somber expression and walked over, placing a gentle hand on his shoulder. Thinking about mom, she asked softly. Gerald nodded, his voice barely a whisper. Every day, Emily, every single day. I'd give everything up, all of this, he gestured around the room, just to have her back. Emily squeezed his shoulder, understanding his pain. She'd be so proud of you, Dad. You've built something incredible. But at what cost? Gerald sighed, his eyes still fixed on the photo. She was the heart of it all. It was her idea, her dream. Emily sat down beside him. I know, Dad, but we have to keep going for her. She believed in this dream, and now it's our legacy. We owe it to her to make it the best it can be. Gerald looked at his daughter, seeing the same determination that Amanda always had. In that moment, he realized that while he couldn't bring Amanda back, he could honor her memory by continuing their shared dream. As Emily matured, her passion for the arts flourished. 
She found herself drawn to painting, music, and theater worlds away from the business-oriented life her father led. Gerald, on the other hand, had always harbored the hope that Emily would one day take over his gym empire. This difference in aspirations slowly became a source of tension between them. As high school graduation approached, Emily's determination to pursue a career in the arts became even more pronounced. She dreamed of going to art school, immersing herself in a world of creativity and expression. Gerald, however, struggled to understand her choice. One evening, the simmering tension came to a head. They were in the living room, surrounded by college brochures, when Gerald broached the subject. Emily, have you given any more thought to joining the family business? He asked, trying to sound casual. Emily sighed, her frustration evident. Dad, we've talked about this. I want to study art. It's my passion. Gerald's expression hardened. Art is a hobby, Emily. It's not a career. I've built this business for us, for our future. But it's your dream, Dad, not mine. Emily replied, her voice rising. I need to follow my own path. In the heat of the moment, Gerald's patience snapped. Fine, but if you choose this path, you're on your own. Don't expect any financial support from me. Emily, hurt and defiant, accepted his ultimatum. I'll manage on my own then. And so she did. After high school, Emily pursued her passion for the arts, but she quickly realized the harsh realities of the real world. Making a living as an artist was challenging. Emily's university years in Germany were a mix of education and hard work. She juggled her studies with various odd jobs, from babysitting children to washing cars. These experiences not only helped her make ends meet, but also taught her valuable life lessons. One realization stood out to her. Success often required financial stability, and achieving greatness in the arts could be closely tied to one's economic resources. After three years of independent living, grappling with the challenges of making her way in a foreign country, Emily's perspective on life and her father's views began to shift. She had matured, gaining a deeper understanding of the complexities of the real world. One day, feeling reflective and a bit homesick, she decided to call her father. Gerald answered, his voice revealing a mix of surprise and cautious warmth. Dad, it's Emily, she began hesitantly. I've been thinking a lot about everything. You were right about some things. Life's tough and maybe I didn't see the whole picture. Gerald listened quietly, absorbing her words. He felt a rush of mixed emotions, vindication, relief, but also empathy for his daughter's struggles. Emily, I'm glad you called, he finally said. But I'm not gonna say I told you so. You needed to go to Germany. You needed to make your own mistakes and learn from them. That's how we grow. Emily smiled, a weight lifting off her shoulders. Thanks, Dad. I guess I had to find my own way to understand what you meant. That's all part of growing up, kiddo, Gerald replied, his voice softening. Remember, it's not about being right or wrong. It's about finding your path and learning along the way. The conversation between Emily and Gerald ended on an unexpected note. Gerald, tapping into a memory of Amanda, shared an idea with Emily that might just bridge their worlds, the world of business and the arts. Amanda, in her lifetime, had been a regular at nail salons. She, like many others, often faced the inconvenience of shifting schedules and long waiting times. Amanda had seen a business opportunity in this, much like she had with the gym business. She had conducted thorough research, crunching numbers and studying the market. One evening, she had excitedly shared her findings with Gerald. With her notes spread across the dining table, she had walked him through the potential of the nail salon industry, her eyes alight with the same enthusiasm that had fueled their gym venture. At the end of her presentation, she had looked at Gerald with a knowing smile as if to say, why don't we open a nail salon? Amanda's untimely passing meant she would never witness the realization of her vision for the nail salon. Gerald, carrying the weight of his wife's unfulfilled dream, made it his mission to bring her idea to life. He poured his heart into starting the nail salon, seeing it as a way to honor Amanda's memory and keep a part of her alive. However, in recent times, the nail salon had faced challenges. Business was not as brisk as it once had been, and there were operational issues that needed a fresh perspective. Gerald saw this not only as a chance to revive the salon, but also as an ideal opportunity for Emily to gain practical business experience. When Gerald proposed the idea to Emily, she was initially hesitant, aware of her lack of business expertise. But Gerald reassured her. Emily, I know this is outside your comfort zone, he said during a phone call. But I believe this could be a great learning opportunity for you. 
It's not just about running a business. It's about creativity, customer service, and problem solving. Skills that are valuable everywhere, even in the arts. Emily listened, the idea slowly taking root in her mind. I guess I could give it a try, Dad. It would be a way to connect with Mom's vision, too, she replied thoughtfully. Gerald was encouraged by her response. Exactly. And I'll be here to guide you. Think of it as a partnership. With a mixture of apprehension and excitement, Emily agreed to take on the challenge. She returned home, ready to dive into the world of business, armed with her artistic sensibilities and a desire to keep her mother's dream alive. Now, as Emily sat in the salon, she was soon to manage, waiting, and as the minutes ticked by, Emily could still feel Rachel the administrator's eyes on her intermittently. The covert glances were filled with unspoken assumptions as Rachel seemed to size her up. Her simple clothing, the absence of lavish makeup, her hair styled in an uncomplicated manner. In Rachel's mind, it was clear that Emily's appearance didn't fit her standard of a typical client. She seemed to believe that a more polished, designer-clad appearance would have warranted a different, more welcoming reception in this upscale salon. Emily, growing increasingly restless with the prolonged wait, noticed a coffee machine nestled in a cozy corner of the salon. The thought of a warm drink was appealing, especially given the coolness of her reception. She remembered from her experiences in other salons that it was customary for staff to offer beverages to waiting clients. It's interesting, Emily mused quietly to herself as she stood up. In most reputable salons, guests would be offered a drink. But I suppose things operate differently here. If there are disposable cups available, they must be for the client's use. With this thought, Emily walked towards the coffee machine, her movements calm and collected. Just as she was about to reach for a cup, Rachel's voice, sharp and reprimanding, sliced through the air. That coffee is for our regular customers only, Rachel said sternly, her tone imbued with a clear message. Emily did not belong to the salon's esteemed clientele. Her words were tinged with a sense of disdain, suggesting that Emily's behavior was presumptuous, almost as if she had overstepped an invisible boundary. Emily turned, a hint of surprise crossing her face. She met Rachel's gaze, her own expression a mix of disbelief and composure. I wasn't aware that the courtesy of a cup of coffee was an exclusive privilege, she replied, her voice steady, betraying none of the irritation that bubbled beneath the surface. Rachel's response was a mere shrug, her expression unapologetic. We have certain standards here. Our regular clients appreciate our exclusive amenities. It's just how we maintain a certain level of service and clientele. It's a shame, she mused. The place looks beautiful, but the people here, not so much. Her train of thought was interrupted as the door to the salon swung open, admitting a woman whose appearance was the epitome of extravagance. Adorned with shimmering gold jewelry and wrapped in a lavish fur coat, she exuded an air of affluence. Rachel, as if on cue, transformed from indifferent gatekeeper to the epitome of friendliness. She greeted the new arrival with a warmth that was in stark contrast to the cold reception Emily had received. Watching this scene unfold, Emily couldn't help but feel a pang of disappointment. Is it really all about the flashy fur and glittering gold? She wondered silently. Do you have to dress like that to get a bit of respect here? Emily had braced herself for a long wait at the nail salon, just like the others. But to her surprise, when a stylish woman walked in, both technicians quickly appeared. They greeted her warmly and led her to a station with an urgency that suggested her appointment was incredibly important. Emily, feeling a bit overlooked, was about to voice her concerns when a third technician, Naomi, hurried in. She shot a quick apologetic look at Rachel, the stern-looking administrator at the front desk. You're late again, Naomi, Rachel said, barely concealing her irritation. Our client here has been waiting. This can't keep happening or I'll have to report it to management. Flustered, Naomi nodded, quickly shed her coat, and vanished into the back room. Moments later, she reemerged, donning a mask and with a more professional demeanor. She walked over to Emily, her smile warm, but her eyes hinting at the stress of the morning. Hi, I'm Naomi. Sorry to keep you waiting, she said, her voice soft but sincere. Let's get you taken care of, shall we? Emily followed Naomi to her station, a mix of sympathy and curiosity in her eyes. As Naomi started working on Emily's nails, her gentle touch contrasted with the occasional tremble in her hands. Emily couldn't help but notice Naomi's striking eyes, which revealed a quiet strength despite her apparent nervousness. Naomi looked to be in her late thirties, 
her movements tentative as she selected tools and occasionally paused, seemingly deep in thought. It was clear to Emily that Naomi was new to this, her hands and choices betraying her inexperience. First week on the job? Emily asked, trying to sound casual. Naomi looked up, a bit surprised, then smiled. Is it that obvious? She responded, a hint of embarrassment in her laugh. Emily and Naomi's conversation flowed naturally, touching upon Naomi's reasons for becoming a nail technician. Naomi shared that she had learned the skills online, a fact that intrigued Emily. Recently relocated to the city, Naomi had been job hunting when she stumbled upon the salon's advertisement. It was a chance encounter that led her here. As they chatted, Rachel, from her desk, couldn't help but overhear their conversation. With a sharp tone, she called out, Naomi, could you step back here for a moment? Naomi excused herself and walked to the back office. There, Rachel confronted her with a stern expression. Are you trying to earn tips from the client? She asked. Before Naomi could respond, Rachel continued, If so, you'll need to try harder. For the first two months, your tips go to the salon. It's our policy to ensure commitment and retention. Naomi returned to Emily, her face a mix of disappointment and frustration, clearly affected by the exchange with Rachel. Emily noticed the change in Naomi's demeanor and felt a pang of sympathy for her. Everything okay? Emily asked gently, sensing Naomi's discomfort. Naomi forced a smile. Just salon policies, she replied, trying to sound upbeat. Let's focus on making your nails look fabulous. Emily noticed Naomi's hands trembling and smiled reassuringly. Your hands are shaking, she said gently. Naomi paused, removing her mask to reveal a weary expression. I really need this job, she admitted. I'm done with tough physical work. Curious, Emily asked her to share more. Naomi's story began with her caring for her grandmother, the only family she had known. Naomi didn't know her parents. Her grandmother had raised her. As Naomi grew older, her grandmother fell ill, needing constant care. Naomi spent her years after her teens devoted to her grandmother, working odd jobs, unable to pursue college. All I had was the internet for learning, Naomi said. I took free online courses to learn anything I could. Emily felt a pang of sympathy hearing Naomi's struggles. But you know, I do like it here, Naomi added with a hint of optimism. I'm picking things up quickly. She leaned closer to Emily, her voice dropping to a whisper. I just don't agree with how they manage things. There's a lot happening behind the scenes. I doubt even the owners are aware. Rachel, busy with her phone, perked up as a man walked in. She greeted him with a big smile. Naomi whispered to Emily, That's the owner. Emily, not facing the door, didn't realize at first that the man was her father, Gerald. Gerald looked around, a bit lost, until he saw Emily and grinned. So you're trying out the service yourself? He asked playfully. Emily turned, her smile widening as she recognized him. They shared a warm hug. How do you like it? Gerald inquired. Emily responded, Well, there's certainly some room for improvement. A staff member whispered to Rachel, That's Mr. Anthony's daughter? Expected someone more high maintenance. The salon fell into a stunned hush. The employees stared in shock, and Rachel turned white as realization dawned. Rachel quickly approached Naomi. Make sure Emily gets the best service, she said hurriedly, then decided to have another technician take over. Turning to Gerald, Rachel's tone changed to one of sugary sweetness. Mr. Anthony, what a delight to have you visit us, she cooed. Emily watched as Rachel's expression shifted to one of remorse and apology when she turned to address her. Emily, I hope you're enjoying your visit. I've asked Naomi to step aside. Our top technician will take care of you now, Rachel said, her voice dripping with contrition. Gerald, observing the scene, couldn't help but comment. Seems like you've got a good handle on things here. Yes, Emily caught us a bit by surprise, Rachel replied with an overdone smile. Emily was taken aback by Rachel's sudden change in demeanor upon learning her identity. She felt a sense of responsibility. Rachel, I'm quite shocked, Emily said firmly. I didn't plan on firing anyone today, but it seems I have no choice. You're dismissed, Gerald looked perplexed, not fully grasping the situation. He glanced at Emily, his expression asking if she was sure about her decision. Yes, Dad, Emily confirmed. We can't have someone who judges and treats people based on their appearance or wealth. That's not acceptable here. Emily was new to the business world, but she was determined to take her father's assignment seriously. 
She decided to first understand the salon's operations from the inside. Her observations had already proved to be valuable. Emily was troubled by the way the administrator treated some clients, especially in a high-end salon where expectations were naturally higher. This isn't just any salon, Emily thought. With the prices we charge, every client should at least be offered a simple cup of coffee. Rachel was dismissed immediately. Emily, with a contemplative look, turned towards Naomi. Naomi, how would you feel about helping me manage this salon? Emily inquired, her voice steady but encouraging. Naomi's eyes widened, a mix of surprise and disbelief washing over her face. A chill of excitement tinged with nervousness ran down her spine. This was an opportunity she hadn't anticipated. Emily smiled reassuringly. I've seen your dedication and how quickly you're learning. I believe you have what it takes. Think of it as growing together with the salon. Naomi was astounded by the turn of events. It had only been a few days since she began her job at the salon, and now she was being offered a chance to help manage it. This is unbelievable, Naomi murmured to herself, still processing the rapid change in her fortunes. A few days ago, I was just hoping to fit in and do a good job. Emily noticed Naomi's astonishment and offered a comforting smile. I know it's a lot to take in, but I've seen your work ethic and your way with people. You're exactly what this salon needs. Naomi took a deep breath, trying to steady her racing thoughts. I'll give it my all, she finally said, her voice firm with resolve. I might be new, but I'm ready to learn and make a difference here. With that, a new chapter began at the salon. Naomi's fresh energy and enthusiasm, combined with Emily's experience and guidance, started to bring positive changes. Clients appreciated the warm, welcoming atmosphere, and the staff felt more motivated and valued. The salon's staff, particularly the hairstylists, saw some changes too. Despite these shifts, the salon's popularity soared, and more clients started coming in. Most importantly, the salon became a welcoming place for everyone, regardless of their attire, not just those in expensive fur coats. The salon expanded and its reputation for quality service attracted more clients. Everyone seemed content, but Emily noticed something odd. Her father, Gerald, began visiting more frequently than usual. It puzzled her, until one day she saw him dropping off Naomi at the salon. Emily couldn't help but smile at this revelation. She had always known her father to be deeply devoted to her late mother, Amanda. But Naomi, with her genuine kindness and warm approach to everyone, seemed to have a unique impact on Gerald. Dad's been coming by more often, hasn't he? Emily casually mentioned to Naomi one day as they were closing up. Naomi blushed slightly, nodding. Yes, he's been very supportive, she said, her voice tinged with a mix of gratitude and surprise. I think he sees how much you've helped turn this place around, Emily said, placing a reassuring hand on Naomi's shoulder. And maybe he's found a new friend in you. The salon's transformation under Emily's leadership was remarkable. It evolved from a mere business into a cherished community space, welcoming people from all walks of life. Emily's emphasis on inclusiveness and kindness had woven a fabric of warmth and acceptance, attracting not just clients, but also creating a bond within the community. Gerald and Naomi's friendship blossomed, and it wasn't long before it turned into something deeper. Emily watched as their relationship developed, feeling a mix of happiness and surprise. She had always seen Naomi as a dependable colleague, but as Naomi and Gerald grew closer, Emily began to see her in a new light, almost like a sister. Eventually, Gerald and Naomi announced their engagement. The news was met with joy and excitement by everyone connected to the salon. The wedding was a beautiful affair, a celebration not just of their love, but also of the community they had helped foster. The salon continued to prosper, with Gerald and Naomi's marriage adding a new chapter to its story. It stood as a testament to the power of love, acceptance, and the beauty of creating a space where everyone is valued and welcomed. Under Emily's guidance, it wasn't just a place for beauty treatments, it was a home for community, growth, and new beginnings.